and welcome back to PGL Tavern Tales Spring Season. My name is Marcin Nimsch-Filipovic and I'm here with Alexander raven Baguli and Jakub lothar Shigulski to bring you this amazing Ooh. final. Why did you use NA accent when, I s when you said my Polish? Why should I change back to Polish when I'm pronouncing your name? Well, you're Polish and it's my Jakub surname. Shigulski. Calm down, guys. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the Brit in the middle here. Like, just calm down. <laughs> it was for my benefit. Okay, yeah, okay. There we go. I get it. All right. Uh, so, can you remember uh, what are the names and uh, last names of our players? No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> just, just check. No. Just check. No, no. But you know their nicknames. Yeah, we have Moody and Trekking Style. That's right. That's right. Raven, are you excited? I am actually, yeah. I'm really excited because they both have very different play styles and very different decks as well. So, mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see where, you know, not so many mirrors and just see who really wins out in the term of more, more like raw aggro as opposed to, you know, a deck like Zoo is a bit more, you know, board control centric. And you know who is the most excited? I think the most excited are my fellow Romanians who are watching this at the very moment because there is a Romanian man in the final and one of them is going to be the champion. Either Moody, Moody or Tracky style. And uh, that's actually Daddy amazing. That will be second Romanian champion in Bucharest, actually. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Hannibal Z2. Um, Wait, that's actually third. Because RDU won too, right? No. No, uh, RDU, no. RDU never wins. No. I'm so sorry. Lothar always <laughs> trying no, to yeah, plug, yeah, yeah. plug the old team there. He won in Sweden. <laughs> never mind. Yeah, he won in Sweden. Um, but Hannibal Z2 won uh, DreamHack Cruz Napoca uh, in Cruz Napoca on Romanian soil. And now we yep. have uh, or Moody or uh, Traki style to win it. Uh, matchup wise, it seems like Moody is at a disadvantage because Chucky Style is running a very aggressive lineup overall. Uh, but we'll see if Moody is able to, to bring his uh, control power. Can I call, call them control powers, even though he's actually playing Zoo? Well, he's known for his board trading, so I would say he might control the game. But it's, it's very important to know when to switch the strategy and just be the aggressor instead. Because if you can't outrace the aggro deck, then you will lose the game at some point. Yeah. And uh, what's at stake, guys? Like, wh what are the prizes, Raven? Yeah, so the um, the w first place is going to get 15 HCT points, I believe. And then second place is ten. on 10. Yeah. And uh, the first place is, I'm going to lose the eight. money now, 8 versus 4. Four. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. uh, thanks, Lothar. Thanks, practice. <laughs> So, so it means they actually are already guaranteed four thousand dollars at least, and ten, uh, ten HCT points will mean that they are um, well uh, qualified for the spring prelims. But I think pre players are actually ready and just waiting for us. So let's allow them to enter. They are waiting here in the hall of the amazing PGL Studios, Look Moody at that stare and Tracky style. Yeah, Moody has this killer stare, actually. I haven't been casting any of his matches today, but every time he was thinking, well, even now. <laughs> Look at that, whoa. Yeah. Is this Mario Kart? Because <laughs> he looks <laughs> like Luigi, right? He just misses the, the message. Oh, my God. Well, they are entering, guys. Is where's the music? Because I'm like... <laughs> where's the pumped music we were promised? Where's the dramatic... This Lothar, is, this is you're the musician. Things. You can sing. Come on. I can Beatbox. Hum. Like, Beatbox. Yeah. Oh, um, horrible. Yeah, so this is actually pretty tense as well, just because like you walk in, <laughs> you walk in with your op opponent, and then the instant cut off from Mo Moody there is like, yeah, I'll go first. It's a bit <laughs> like boxing, right? Yeah. They like should they should have a stir contest, and like you know, they should be all whoever looks away first. Yeah. before <laughs> the game. Like you know, this dude is in this weight category, this dude is this in this weight category, and it's like, well, someone uses steroids. <laughs> It should be drug tests. Yeah. Some for Hearthstone. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, it, 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 talking about categories, uh, I, I think both of them are really uh, relying on heavy top decks overall. Yeah. You're and getting like better and better. And exchanging, <laughs> exchanging <laughs> yeah. some blows as well, you know? But they are not exactly friends, but uh, would you call them enemies at the moment, Lothar? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going for yeah. Yeah, I think <laughs> in the finals, no, no matter how good of a friend you know your opponent might be, it could be your best friend. But when you know like, these guys take this very seriously, so when the game's on, it doesn't matter who you're against; you're there to win. Yep, I agree. I mean, it's about the title, right? It's not about yeah. the money right now. I mean, at least from my perspective, that will be the case. It's not about the cash. It's not about the points. It's about having the price. Uh, sorry, the the champions title. Because that's what it's all about. Yeah, and I think um, depending on obviously how how who, whoever or how these guys choose to spend it, the money can actually help go to more events. Yeah, as definitely. well, which is then you know like you could come up DreamHack Summer, so on, so on. So being able to actually travel to these events and have like a cash fund for that, because it's not cheap to be depend on where they are. That's one of the things I always tell the the guys who are winning anything in tournaments. Uh, they're top four, top two. They're winning a tournament, and I ask them what's the next step they want to do. Do they want to go? 
you know, try to be a professional gamer at some point? Is that something they want to achieve? And if they s say, yes, I would like to do that, then the next step is, uh, I just always say to them, invest that money in traveling to yeah. other tournaments. Because if you only win one and, you're not sh and you will not show consistency in other events, then it doesn't really matter that you win one event. It are it's not important. Are you not telling them to buy packs? Yes, buy packs, support Blizzard for making this awesome <laughs> game. <laughs> Don't use the Temple Storm code. Well, it, it doesn't <laughs> give you uh, any kind of discount. Well, not at the mo <laughs> not at the moment, at least, um, guys. We are actually ready with the players on um, the stage, and uh, Diana is with them to ask them some questions. Hello, good evening, Buonasera. Here we are with the two finalists, Extracky Style and Moody, Marius and Stefan. Before we start the interview, I just want to start to kick things off with the story of how uh, Extracky Style, one of the big surprises in this tournament, came to be here. Um, you told me a couple of days ago that actually it was a friend that sent you the registration link for the qualifier. Yes. Uh, uh, So, okay, why did you want to compete in this tournament? In your own words. Am jucat în calificări și în ultimul meci am fost eliminat, dar oponentul meu nu a putut să vină și am ajuns aici și am ajuns în finală și voi juca împotriva lui Modi și sper să fie un meci frumos și cel mai bun să câștige. Okay, so he's very nervous. It was a, s a bit of luck that he came to be here because one of the initial qualified uh, players could not be here, so he was a replacement. But look how far he has come. So please, audience, can we give a Extracky Style a hand? <laughs> that was great. <laughs> that was great. So, Moody, um, you've been to a couple of PGL events already. You've been to DreamHack Bucharest. You've been to DreamHack Cluj-Napoca. And this is the first time that you made it to a final. And you're on the way to BlizzCon because the winner of this match will get $8,000 and also 15 uh, Hearthstone Championship points. Is BlizzCon something that you really want to um, achieve? It, to achieve? Yes, uh, for sure. It's one of my goals. So I I'm really glad about it. Let's hope that the winner of this match gets to fulfill that dream. And let's talk about this tournament a little bit. Um, today, you've had a great run. You know, you've had 3-0 uh, results in the first uh, half of the day. And I want to you to tell me, who do you think was your toughest opponent? My opponent was very difficult. The last match was the most difficult for me, because I won 3-1. I won 3-1, I won 3-0. I won 3-0. I won 3-0. I won 3-0. La 1-0 pentru adversar, am crezut că nu o să mai câștig, dar cu ajutorul norocului am făcut. Ok, so, like the stream showed, he thinks that Gianni Druid is actually his toughest opponent and he was pretty concerned after the first round that he was going to lose, but he is here now ready to fight in the final. Moody, uh, you came into this competition with some pretty classic competitive decks, but out of everything you've seen so far, which do you think was the tournament's toughest uh, and most aggressive deck? Well, I think I'm about to face the most aggressive decks from this tournament and I'm not really excited about it. So, we'll see how it, how it goes. Well, uh, Extracky Style just said that he's particularly scared of your Patron Warrior. Do you think that your Patron Warrior is going to pull through? I don't have Patron Warrior. Oh, I'm sorry. That was my mistake. <laughs> okay, uh, and finally, you two have very different uh playing styles you know you take your time you've been compared to life coach and uh, you are very fast and aggressive how do you both guys think that your styles will clash well i think it will be a, a slow game i think the colleagues are better against him but the other side will make problems so he thinks that overall that his decks are better, but uh, he is concerned about the Warlock. Well, good luck to both of you guys. And now please take it away and let's get ready for the final.
Thank you so much, Diana. And uh, Moody is uh, so calm <laughs> when he talks about those things. He's like, okay, I'm just going to take my time in the final. Uh, he does understand that he might be disadvantaged with regards to decks. Um, he, well, doesn't have Patron Warrior with him, um, which might be a problem overall. Did he forget the deck? That's an oil, <laughs> so old joke from, you know, other card games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just not taking the deck with you for the tournament. Um, yeah. That would be sad, right? That would be sad. Yeah, I didn't take my decks with me. Oh, <laughs> Um, I guess. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm just uh, taking any deck that uh, somebody can provide provide me and and just play with it. Uh, but yeah, Tracky style. Um, this is in fact his first tournament. Uh, he didn't have much experience before, but now he is experienced with playing versus all those players. Even though he was super nervous, uh, he si he still seems nervous, and uh, he was shaking. He didn't know what to say. So maybe those nerves will um, play a big role. Even though he has an advantage with his lineup. He might play fast and make mistakes. Yeah, I think he's actually uh, he's come across quite nervous overall and throughout the whole tournament. But mm -hmm. let's be honest, during the games, you know, he's, he's done the job, right? He's made it count. So yeah. even though he's nervous building up to it and uh, with the interview, like I think once he's in the game and you know he gets just like the quiet in his headset and he can focus on the game, I think he'll be fine actually. Because everything like whenever you play in this sort of setting, yeah, as soon as you start, everything else is zoned out and then you really just focused on the game. So I, th I think it'll that's be okay. That's how it should be. Yeah, exactly. For yeah. the player, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, and on the other hand, uh, Lotha, what do you have to say about Moody? Uh, I just hope he will be more aggressive in this game. And that's it. Because if he will be doing what he was doing before, it will not work out uh, against those aggro decks. And I, f I hope that he reevaluated how the games went for him in the previous, uh, in the previous series and how, uh, how Trackstyle is playing his uh, own game. Because he's like track style with his aggro lineup is basically ignoring almost every single time what is his opponent doing and he's, he has the eye on the prize right yeah and the eye on the prize is the 30 points of hp on his opponent's hero and that's about it absolutely uh but um, he has a lot of experience playing as as diana mentioned uh, he was in cruz napoca and bucharest uh, going deep in both tournaments so he has it uh, to actually take it in the final well he is in the final at v the very moment showing that dreamhack bucharest was uh, one of his uh, first performances he was at isf as well mm -hmm. and uh cruz napoca he went pretty far and now he's in the final so he's improving all the time so i don't know like if we see moody in the final of the dreamhack i would not be surprised seeing the achievements that he has so far and he might be our champion we don't know this at the moment yeah, man. I think this sort of harkens back to what we were talking about earlier, where he's definitely good at the game, right? You know, there's no there's no real doubts there. But I think he needs to, to continue to improve. He needs to really um, acknowledge what he's weak at and, and see that and be able to then, like, really work on it, like you say. So in a matchup like this specifically, you need to be able to turn that switch and become the aggressor and actually finish up the game. And that's going to be, I think, you know, like, like yeah. you said, like, really important yeah. in this matchup. This will be a big test for him because this is the moment where you're facing your opponent uh, who has less experience but has a better lineup than you. If you're able to overcome it, you are the champion. Yeah. The better lineup against you. Yeah, exactly. Case, yeah. Right. Um, but one one thing that I always tell the players is that one thing that distinguish, uh, I mean, makes the difference between a good player and a very good player or a top tier player is the ability to learn from your own mistakes or to to admit that you're making a mistake and you can yeah. improve on uh, in the and on that field. Right? You can improve on your own mistakes and you can learn from it. So that's very important. And uh, hopefully, Moody took like the lessons from the past two days uh, because he was on the brink of elimination twice b because of his like two safe plays right yeah and I, think, to and I think like like you said um versus this lineup specifically this is the w one way you'll get punished the most for that kind mm -hmm. of style because yeah. just trading too much and then suddenly you're just dead and yeah. you, you know when he could have had the opportunity to go because the second you become the aggressor against an aggro deck like you win like that's the way it normally works because you make Usually it, it yeah yeah I mean like that's the way to win you, you mm. make them do the weird trades and they slow down so Hope yeah we'll see how it works out hopefully for for moody um the hunter is the least aggressive deck and it will cost him uh, cost tracker style at least a game right yeah. because it runs a flare it runs a cousin mystic and those cards are like well usually you don't want to play those cards in an aggressive style right so for for moody it's a 
good thing to abuse to get at least that one win against the least aggressive deck uh, from Traki style uh, lineup. Yeah. Definitely. Let's talk about those lineups. So as you mentioned, Hunter for uh, Traki style, um, exactly what you said. Then Shaman uh, being an aggressive Shaman with um, the elemental destruction as well. And the last deck is uh, aggressive Paladin. So mm -hmm. an, an interesting lineup overall that we don't see uh, very often. Uh, what is there for Moody, guys? Yeah, so he has the, uh, the Druid, which we've just seen pretty steadily throughout this whole tournament, right? Has he just always brought Druid, as far as I'm aware, from what we saw from the Swiss stage? I think so. Yeah, I, th I think he's Not gonna lie, I think but I think so. I think he's still with Druid throughout the whole thing. Uh, the Paladin we've seen uh, is Secret Paladin, I believe, and then the Warlock is the Zoo. But what was interesting was we've seen the Secret Paladin and the Zoo Lock played in a, in a hyper-defensive manner. Uh, and the first game is gonna be Zoo. It is Demon Zoo uh, versus the Hunter. So would you say this is a bad matchup for the Zoo, Lothar? <sighs> Well, it all now depends if the Metal Gang is w will be seen for, for Moody, because that's like the win card against uh, Hunters in, in most situations, if you can pull it off from the Void Cooler and get the Metal out. But as you can see, there's also, uh, from Turkey Style, there's also an Owl in his hand. So the all it's all about baiting out the Silence before you play the Void Cooler, which can be easily done uh, with the Nervin Egg. So it seems like... Moody might be on the road of taking it here if Trakistar will not be aggressive enough. Yeah, and I think the traps are going to play a lot into this as well. So on one side, you've got the Void Caller potentially pulling the demons. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the other side, I think we saw, um, uh, I'm not sure all of the traps from Trakistyle, but we, we saw Bear free. Trap and... Uh, bear trap and explosive trap. What was the and freezing, freezing trap and freeze? Yeah. So actually, like you can just straight up lose this matchup by playing around the wrong trap at the wrong time. Well, that happened to Gen Druid. Oh, okay. I didn't get to catch all those matches, mm -hmm. but he basically attacked us with a knife juggler that was buffed with Avenge, and with full full um, upgrade from the cog hammer, so divine shield and taunt into a freezing trap. Ah. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. sounds so bad as, as, as yeah. it was bad. So. Yeah, so, so so and this is the thing, and, and this is kind of, I really like this style in Hunter where you run just like a selection of traps, because so then it's so unpredictable. Raven, how happy are you to cast Hunter in the final where Hunter was not even played in the tournament. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm super happy. I, uh, Hunter's my favorite class overall. Um, I, like I said, I didn't get to see too many of his cards in his deck, but from what I know of it, it sounds pretty straightforward. But I'm, I'm really happy as well at that. I, even if it wasn't Hunter, I the pick of picking the deck that no one's played all weekend, because no one's ever going to try and even think about it in the lineups. Cause it's like, oh, no one will bring that deck. Yeah. And then in this lineup, especially with Last Hero standing, like you can you can hit so hard with a fully aggro lineup. It's uh, it's pretty ruthless. And there's one of those traps. So the bear traps down, and uh, again, it's very um, interesting with, on how Moody's going to approach these traps because you play around each one differently. So it's um, it's going to be really difficult. Wait, did he mulligan away the void card? It looks like it. Wait. This isn't this isn't the first time we saw this. We saw this in the yeah. previous set from Moody. I mean, he had the decent opener, right? Yeah, he had Nerubian Egg, Void Caller, and... I think he was looking for something like a Flame Imp to start the aggression and start the race, so... But in this, like, this is the least aggressive deck. So, if you have a Void Caller, which has such a great value against the Hunter, because it can easily win you the game on, on the, like, alone, right? You trade for two creatures, you get out a Doomguard or a Mulganis, you taunt it up, because you can do it in one turn, but and it's over. The problem is, like, I if you keep Nerubian Egg, and if you keep Void Caller, your game might look like turn one, nothing, turn two, uh, Egg, turn three, life top, turn four... But he had a first card that could have been played on turn three. That was an Haunted Crew. Uh, there was yeah, Dark, was dark Peddler, Dark yeah. Peddler, yeah. Well, yeah. the Dark Peddler was even better. I'm really surprised that he didn't uh, keep the peddler and the egg and the um, void color and the void color. And thing is as well, like it's really great having a one drop, but going all in on the mulligan on that kind of thing, like against this hunter, which is you know it's still an aggressive deck, but it's the least aggressive as he said. Like I, I don't know, it seems interesting. Now he's stuck with double doom guard, so this actually isn't the first time we've seen this from Moody. And uh, you know we'll see how it works out in the long run. It might be fine. Um, but now he follows it with a creeper, and there's just going to be spiders all over the show here. There's already two spiders and an egg that spawns a style of spider, and then two more creepers in hand for well, the The good news for Moody is that the spiders will not be able to um, break for the knife juggler to hit. The mm -hmm. bad news is that he's uh, already behind. 
Yeah, and even like this kind of board is really difficult because you have to think about versus Hunter. One of the swingiest turns uh, that Hunter can do versus a deck like this or versus a deck like Secret Paladin is the uh, Knife Juggler Unleash. And then like you can just wipe the board and then you have so many dogs to then clear anything else up and then push for damage. Um, so cards like Implosion are very dangerous in this match. Like they can perform really well for the Warlock or they can actually be a double-edged sword and you actually get bit back there by the dogs. Because uh, yeah, I've Unleashed the Hounds. Uh, here, not much choice. Uh, he's still thinking about uh, his turn, uh, but uh, it's like life coach, right? Like thinking about the whole game overall. Oh, beard. <laughs> <laughs> he shaved it before the tournament, just in case. No. Oh, so this <laughs> is yeah. I mean, so I actually um, quite like bear trap here. Maybe owl onto the egg to just kill the egg. Owl off. to the egg yeah. sounds awesome. Yeah, because I mean, next turn you can still bear trap. I just want the bear trap down before you can potentially juggler unleash. That's all. Mm -hmm. I yeah, there's, I agree with that. Th there's few options here for tracky style. It's important to have an answer to a void caller, and this might if he, if he th thinks about it, then he might keep the owl for that occasion. Uh, but for now, it looks like the egg might bring the most value because. He played two minions that couldn't be traded uh, traded with the egg to spawn the 4-4. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't know really if if there's anything for uh, for Moody to trade with the egg next time. I'm kind of surprised by that because I'm, I'm, I'm like valuing the egg way more than the Hunter Creeper, especially when you have Mad Dragon and the Unleashed House already in hand. Yeah, I was like... If you just look at this board and that play in isolation, it was okay because if the egg procs, you can kill the 4-4 the, the four four with what's on the board. But because you have the knife juggler and the leash, you, you don't mind the, cre the, the enemy creeper dying because it's just more tokens for you to yep. juggle with. So uh, I find that really strange, especially because next turn, like, bear trap hero power feels pretty good because that 3-3 three, three coming out of the bear oh. trap is pretty huge. He probably did that to play around knife juggler on the other side. So uh, looking at the knife juggler in your hand, you're thinking about the same card on the other side as uh, well. I wouldn't play in any situation around knife juggling. I think with two creepers board, on the board. Two creepers yeah. on the board, you're perfectly fine uh, with any kind of board. Yeah, I, I do agree, but apparently he did at that, yeah. uh, that moment. Unless there was something else that we can't see. Yeah, that's the one clunky ha clunky card that he is playing in this deck. I mean, he can just play that this turn if he really wants. I can't, I like getting the bear trap down, but... No, 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 I mean, this turn, you definitely have to play the Christmas. This is the only turn when you can actually yeah. do it. And I would have traded the the Hunter Creeper into the 1-1. You are actually adding power to your board, and you're preserving the life of your 2-1. And your 1-1 is basically useless for, for now. It's even and you're not you playing against Hunter where you're going to be punished. Yes, and, and you don't exactly want to keep the Hunted Creeper for next turn is Unleash the Hound uh, with the Knife Juggler because you won't have space yeah. to do that. Because I think as well, the um, you should be pretty confident that you know Moody Zoo, uh, Zoo deck, so you know it's not the Giants. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's not like, oh, okay, I don't want to trade because then he can just slam a Giant on the board and then that's a problem. So I, I think, yeah, that was a really interesting one there. For Moody, by the way, this power of roaming is a great uh, top deck. But um, I think he might go for a life top instead of going for Defender Vargas. Just um, power of me, kill the four three, kill the two one with the one one, and uh, oh wow, oh that that was actually really I think he took my advice a bit too <laughs> too, seriously. <laughs> too seriously, right? Because that wasn't yet the moment <laughs> to, to switch it because you had. A defender of Argus in the hand, which, against is, Hunter, which, which is, is like the yes card yeah. against the Hunter that oh, wins wow. you the game. In most situations when you can just pawn up a huge, serious minion like, let's say, the spider from the egg. Uh, yeah. Or just activate the egg. Oh, never mind. Yeah, that's why. Well, <laughs> no, no, it's <laughs> actually. Mind, it's actually uh, you're right, Lothar. I, I thought like this turn was actually life tap, power overwhelming on the. Uh, on the egg, kill Kazan, get a 4 4, kill the 2 1, and play and your own spider. Yeah. And Spider would give you a chance to have a good Defender of Argus next exactly, turn. Exactly, yeah. So this is really crazy. I mean, he still has the Argus and the Spider, but I think quick, quick, pretty quickly this is becoming a bit scary because now these are the turns where the Hunter can start weaving in hero powers very easily. And, uh, you know, the Warlock's Life Tap is only going to help with that. And then you've done zero yep. damage to the Hunter so far. So th this is looking very, very and scary. And you lost double Doomguard already. And those Doomguards will be so powerful, like, later in the and game. And the problem here is, as well, is, like, he can power overwhelming and kill this, which is fine. But because the Egg doesn't actually die till the end of the turn, he can't Argus it either. So he'll have to wait and hope it survives. But That was a good occasion to, to, to pop that. 
um, Haunted Creeper and just go for the combo of Unleash the, Unleash the Hounds and Knife Juggler. Is it better? Let's, uh, let's I don't know. I kind of like Animal Companion now. Oh, so it's Huffer. I see that. No, don't trade. I would like. <laughs> I would 100% go face. Yeah. You have Juggler Unleash as, as like the you know the the rubber band effect that if he does something ah, crazy. That, that's a nice reference. I, will, yeah. I have to remember that. I'll give you that one, Lothar. <laughs> I want full credit and a royalty check every time you uh, say. Okay, it. okay. Uh, but after <laughs> Dota, will pay me. No, uh, Blizzard. Actually. No, never mind. <laughs> um, yeah. So I like just going face. Yeah, but it's, it's seven damage. Yeah. Your yeah. opponent is at 15. It's half. Oh, no. It's a half. Yeah, half can only attack heroes, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> only Hunter minions can only attack heroes, right? Um, yeah, no, th time. this is really good. And you swiftly get into the point where it, it doesn't matter what your opponent plays. Um, because if anything happens, that creeper dies. There's two two uh, hounds and a, well, two the juggles, right? So the game is not over yet. There is a chance for a possible Morganis from the Void Caller, but at this point, you probably have to go for P.O. on the spider, kill the huffer. Ah, uh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Because you need to play around traps. Yeah, and and this is the brilliant thing about playing one of. Well, in you the can traps. attack with a four four into one one first. No, because it might be freezing trap. Yeah, but then you P.O. the one two and attack. But with it. you lose a. You, you have a 5-mana minion 4-4, four four, which is basically useless. Um, not exactly sure what to think about that, because my my initial thought would be ignore the trap. Well, now you can actually attack with Spider. And just play Defensive Argus. And the thing to remember here is, like, regardless of how well he plays this board, he's on 13 health. He, has, he, just juggle, two times. he has Juggler Unleash and Hero Power and, you know, Dr. Boom's uh, I, I wouldn't do I, that, I, I wouldn't I, I, do that. That's the one turn when you actually don't play it. Yeah. I would have traded in with the juggler and then unleashed and yeah. then just all face and hero power. Yeah, definitely. Was that potentially That was Was there any way that was lethal? Well you, you, get you, you ha your opponent has five minions, right? So you get five juggles, five attack to the face, so no uh, no way of getting lethal unless it's hits five times face. Yeah. There is one uh, bomb attacking right? or not. The odds of that happening are quite uh, low. But I think just, just the just putting them to effect, no health like, as well. Like, yeah. You just slam his face, hero power. You take advantage of that at the, of that momentum. And, and way you more get important. the damage in now, because if taunts, you know, if Argus comes down something crazy with the void into then the one ones are not that impactful. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and you can still hero power, right? Because he was on seven, so he could juggle yeah. hero power as well. Yeah, and yeah. Unleash, so. Uh, but in theory, the spider will pop, so you'll still be able to use the unleash with the juggler. Yeah. Next turn. It was just you put the pressure on the Warlock this turn as opposed yeah, to yeah, giving him any form of out this turn. But you can just see a Voidwalker. Wait, what, what did he turn up this thing in him? Um, that didn't make any sense. Well, he's well, playing around Because of the way so. the, the minions were positioned, did it not matter that you turned it up? Because it, uh, something would have died. Anything that you turned it up. But he had 7 attack anyway. He could have... Did he? Yeah, he had an, he had an end and a hunted creeper. So he could have attacked with the, imp, with the hunted creeper and an imp and have a taunted up Nerugan yeah, yeah, yeah. Nerugan egg, uh, sorry, Nerugan spider. Oh my god. And the he, didn't even want one he didn't even want the yeah, big bomb. He didn't bomb. even want that. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and this is. Yeah. This is rough. And, and Warlock the problem has well no tools to uh, come back. With the this. Argus, you're not even playing around explosive trap because the minions die. So uh, yeah, that was kind of rough, and this game has just gone from bad to worse for Moody, I think, um, and really good for track style. Yep. And now he can even pop the Hunter Cooper if he wants to. For extra damage. He could pass three turns and still probably win this game. <laughs> yeah. I'm being serious. Like he's, on, yeah, he's yeah, not yeah, even yeah. been touched yet. He's on 30 health. I think you hear a power. Yeah, Moody has only health. one card, and Moody will have to tap, right? I mean, it doesn't matter that he didn't hero power there, but I'm pretty sure you do hero power. Because the trap was, has no time to do anything, right? But uh, but sure, I'm being picky now. I mean, uh, sometimes you can. I don't know. <laughs> you can say that justify some plays, yeah, yeah. but uh, in this situation, there was no way that there were correct plays. They were just plain throwing out the game out of the window. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't exactly sure how to how to play this matchup, mm. apparently. Uh, maybe he didn't test Hunter enough, you know. Hunter is not at sugar the... Sugarcoat! Ah! ah <laughs> so what would you like to sugarcoat? <laughs> you know, there's usually, you know, there's like a way of sugarcoating while casting. 
Well, I think it, it, there was no even. I, I think way it's, to it's, not, it's not even that. Like just trying to be nice, but we always try to explain the potential reason for a play, mm -hmm. and sometimes it is. It can be difficult when we can't see that potential reason. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, from our perspective, it seems like he uh, ha hasn't practiced that much up much, and uh, probably doesn't show up on ladder anymore that often. Or but uh, that's one of the oldest matchups that you have in Hearthstone in general. Zoo yeah, in and general Hunter it is, is yeah, so like the basics so of Hearthstone so one-on-one. -on -one. This play was really scary as well because you'd actually seen an owl, so the Argus onto the egg suddenly becomes quite powerful, yeah. or even just the PO onto the egg to k clear off the 4-3. Yeah. Um, and then from that point, I think with the Doom Guard, he was always behind because the Doom Guard got a trade into a four attack minion, which puts it at three health when there's minions on the board. The Doom Guard isn't getting much more value than that. Yeah, th um, those Doom Guards were basically really good overall. If you are able to play the Doom Guard at turn six or seven, or even if you get that Void Caller back that you mulligan away, uh, you can just uh, maybe Argus the Void Caller yeah. and then make sure that the Doom Guard is back because the Owl is gone. You are super happy about the Owl being used already. It's not about even what was happening in the game. I think what was the most important aspect of this matchup was the fact that the Morgan was was the one of the most important things to do, and having already a key, um, a peddler, egg. A, an egg, and a void caller. Did he was actually Morgan peddler? Yeah. Yeah, he Morgan peddler. There was like one of the best openers you can get against a hunter because you have a guarantee that you can get a. a if whatever demon you will top deck during the game, you can get it out for free. So even if it's a Void Walker, it's still value. It puts a taunt on the board, which will buy you health. Yeah, right? Mortal Coil as well versus Hunter. from the Peddler. Yeah, you can get a Mortal well. Coil. You can get a boar, another Void Walker. <laughs> like another Void Walker, yeah. Boar, uh, um, an Elven Archer. There's yeah, like very good mul cards multitude versus of cards that you can get for one mana that yeah. also makes your curve really good because yeah. you had a two drop with the egg, a free drop with the Peddler. So and you can something play on the Void Caller. You can play. Tournament in D, you can play the life coach uh, impersonator, right? The f what, what is his name? One mana, one two, taunter? Goldshire Footman? Oh, yeah. the Goldshire Footman. Yeah, yeah. that one. So Modi being life coach impersonator would play life coach impersonator? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there was like multitude of options to, to do differently this game yeah. and have better But it seems like he absolutely had a, a different plan for this game. Like he was, he mulliganed everything away because he was looking for a one drop. It didn't work out for him and it seems like this plan didn't work overall. Um, yeah. and he made the decision based on that. So it started there as I, I absolutely agree with you. Like yeah, throwing away those cards just cost him the game. I think to continue as Moody here, he needs to really just... Uh, breathe for a second and just refocus because that game would have flustered me like oh. if you're playing there when you, you just got effectively demolished I mean you didn't do any damage to the hunter so <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, you didn't do any damage and you just got crushed so I would definitely just really focus on just relaxing and just like resetting yourself for the, for this and don't get, try and get too worked up because that was a rough game but and that was the that was the easiest matchup for him from the, all the matchups he had available that was the easiest one because against a face shaman I guess an aggro paladin, you can be just crushed three times faster than that. Yep. What was happening here? The, the hunter had of, had, of course, the best answer to Zoo in form of um, knife juggle to unleash the hounds. But at the same time, he had a great op uh, he, had a, he, he, he had a great way of controlling the board, even though it should be other way around. Yeah, and let's not, you know, we've been talking about Moody for quite a lot, but let's not take this any, anything away here. Tracky style played that well. Yeah, yeah he, he, he played it as well. Uh, he played it as well as he should. It was like one mistake, I think. Yeah, I think there was, yeah, the, 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 the creeper. Hunter, creeper yeah. Yeah. And, and traded into a minion and didn't go face. <laughs> yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> no, no, he played Dr. Boom on 7. That was a mistake. Yeah, yeah, As yeah. funny as it sounds, but that was yeah. the mistake that uh, uh, in this game, because putting out the immediate damage on board was actually more valuable, and hero power as yeah. well, than putting... A uh, seven seven minion and one one bombs. I would like to do mistakes like that. It's like not playing Doctor Boomer seven was a mistake. Ah, <laughs> feels bad, man. Yeah. So we are going to see the Druid versus the Hunter. So um, already we can see Tracky Style's got an okay curve, except Unleash the Hounds is much less impactful in this matchup. Yeah, um, it's it, like it can be okay like really late on, or if you run like a Hunter's Mark, which I'm pretty sure we've not seen from Tracky Style. Um, so even just like. Unleash uh, Hunter Mark to kill like a Druid of the Claw or something it can be okay, but um, you know definitely the Web Spring and the Creep is a good start. But on the other side, Moody has Wild Growth and a Wrath to yeah. deal with some of this early aggression. He will be looking for Keeper of the Grove, obviously, to silence Mad Scientist or just uh, deal with the mm -hmm. board. Pilot Shredder is also Ooh, nice. That's a great opening yeah. hand for Moody. Yeah, coin out Wild Growth in one into turn three. Sorry, turn two. Shadow Maxonus turn three. 
our Pilot Shredder, and then you have an answer in Form Tin 3, 4 mana, Rev and Hero Power. Looks like a great start. Yep. Yeah, this is something we talked about Lothar before, um, you and me, about uh, the Paladin openings, anti-Paladin openings for Druid. This is exactly what you want to have, the, those minions a bit earlier to be able to trade into uh, other minions and to stop the aggression, and then you just start racing as a mm. Druid. And if the turns go to turn 6 or, f or 7, if you still have minions, you can actually kill the Hunter before he does anything else. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes maybe you want a Keeper instead of the Palter Shredder, but any 4-drop for Druid well, in this situation to is be like honest, amazing. He's got, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cards, and none of them are below 4, uh, none mm. of them are above 4 mana. Yeah. Which is definitely what you want as Druid in, in, this, in most aggro matchups. It's true. All right, so Moody has to uh, figure out if the Wild Grove is the best play here, and I, f I think, I'm and I agree, no it is. Yeah, it just has to be. Um, the wi Wild Growth into into Shade into Shredder is just too good. Yeah, you would not Wild Grove probably if you don't have the Shade. Yeah, there's no need to coin into it. Um, at least that turn, you'll probably just pass. Um, because the Web Spinner at the moment isn't too much of a threat. When Web Spinner becomes a, a real threat is much later on. Um, when it can be like Houndmastered if you leave it, for it becomes a 3-3 uh, with Taunt, or it can enable kill commands and things like yeah. that. Yeah, but it's still a bad matchup for Druid overall because Hunter will be pressuring from the very beginning. There is an owl for possible taunts. There is a, a really good animal companion as well. There are high mains that are hard to deal with. Freezing Trap, if, if pulled, it can also stop Druid from advancing. Yeah, and this yeah, the Physic Trap will be MVP. Yeah. This Animal Companion is actually huge as well. Drawing into that for turn 3 instead of having to just Hero Power or do it the weirdest uh, mm -hmm. Unleash the Hounds ever, mm -hmm. um, it is huge. Because also, Animal Companion, similar to Mysterious Challenger in the fact that it's so much better when you have other minions on board versus just playing it on an empty board. And because the Creeper's down, it looks like you know at least the tokens might survive. Yeah. By the way, so far, Tracky Style, while playing the Hunter, had only Leox and one time hover. Okay. So yeah. statistically maybe it would be a bigger chance of having a Misha right now, which would be awesome against the Druid in general. Because it it, it like pushes a swipe from your opponent. It just demands swipe, yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. You, just, you just have to Ooh. Oh nice. I think you still Yeah do you, this. St you still wait. You don't care oh, about Look at that. It just counters the Both <laughs> are RNG math. Oh my god. Wait, so you said it should be Misha, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, good work. Well, it still has to be Palter Shredder, no other way around it. Yep. It's decent. Palter Shredder can trade into minions. And then you have the perfect Freezing Trap because it's 10-5, no f force of nature to play around the Freezing Trap. Even if that would be a bird trap or an explosive mm. trap, it's still great to would play a force of nature into that. And you know what's really yeah. good? The Freezing Trap is going to bounce the high cost minion. Because next turn, because he's not going to attack now. With the shade, I imagine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So next turn, he's going to attack with the shredder, right? Yeah. Because you, the sh the shredder, yeah, it dies, but it leaves a minion behind, whereas the shade just dies. So you'd use the shade to trade in something mm -hmm. smaller. So hopefully, it continues to grow and live. Um, and then bouncing the shredder, like oh, that's six drop shredder in hand, brilliant. Yeah, that's uh, just amazing because not only you take uh, care of the shredder, you also just deny turn four, basically with two mana. So two yeah. mana cancel turn four of the. And of then the, the shade almost has to just kill itself on Misha. Yeah. But it depends on what's drawn, of course. You know, if you draw swipe, then yeah. Okay. The Freezing Trap is a great play for turn 4. Even if you just pair it up with a hero power, it's still fine. It's similar to um, how good Freezing Trap can be versus Rose as well. Mm -hmm. Like, especially early on, because it just like play like a minion. Similar to the way Druid just drops like a single minion every turn. Like Freezing Trap, you can just lock something out so hard. Some, like, some might argue. Uh, but I think Dragon Style is on point when it comes to, to his games right now. Like... Mm. You know, the do Dr. Boom on 7 was like an initial thought, right? Everyone would probably yeah. play and, and the Dr. Boom. And the problem is, but like, he was so far ahead, it was just like, sure. You know, like, yeah. not, they not, both not were great. Just like, yeah. which one should be better, right? It, it, exactly. If, if you were like 100%, like, actually going for the perfect play every turn, yeah. Dr. Boom was slightly worse, but Dr. Boom was still fine in that scenario. Yeah, yeah exactly. But this is, um, this is really good, and I'm glad Hunter's winning so we continue to watch Hunter play. <laughs> Honestly, I love it. I mean, 3 0 Hunter yeah, final, I, Raven. I'm, I'm fine with that. And you this, did is, miss this is no preference to the player. This is no preference to the player whatsoever. But I just want to see more Hunter games. And he bounced the shade. That is that really is surprising. interesting. That is that really is surprising really interesting. because now the shade is practically useless. But that's a good move. Like, he's getting a minion out of the shredder. But I'm. Uh, so, hang on. Is Look at that minion. 
Well, now you get the top decked. No, wait, you, you can. Never mind. That minion will actually do some work here. No, you can't play the Han Master. No. Eh, I'd, uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, I, I, I think I would have just sacrificed the, uh, the web spinner, see what beast do I have, and just hero power this turn. Well, the thing is with the Hound Master now, the 1 1 has to go into the taunt. Uh, potentially. Oh, no. Okay, the 5-5 yeah, the, the five five will go into the taunt, and then the 1-1 one one goes into 4-3, so you're yeah. left with Creeper, and then you, you still have Kill Command. Yeah, so yeah you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My bad, my bad. And what's, what's really good now is, like, either Kill Command Emperor, awesome, you keep the Creeper, but even, like, Druid of the Claw, Kill Command and Trade Creeper. I don't think you actually care about the minions anymore. He's at 15 life. Yeah, you just go face. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, it, you can deal with the minions that are piled if, if needed. But, um, yeah, I think that... The, the Houndmaster was yeah, fine. The thing is, like, damage. as a Hunter, you have a limited amount of time right now. Um, so you do want to do as much damage to face as you want with the hero power. And the funny thing is, by ignoring the minions, it's actually buffing your damage to Hounds to do even more damage later yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, you just, yeah, ignore it. And he has Owl, which is super important. So if a taunt comes out, it just doesn't matter anymore because the Owl's so easy to squeeze <laughs> in. <laughs> squelch <Yeah>. from Woody. <laughs> that was a fast squelch. But also, the angry chicken from Web Spin is a little bit rough, um, although he's still in a good position. Um, that's one turn too late. Hmm. So do you just uh, go with uh, small minions? Like Anish? Ma Anish ma maybe house? you kill, kill Command the 5-5 five five now. Why not kill Command face? Go 2-2 two two face with the dogs. Cause, cause the Hero power face. That's 9 damage to face. He's at 6. Mm. I would probably just go Anish the house, deal 2 damage. Yeah. And play the younger chicken as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the best option because well, you you push for damage, you demand the notion of law from your opponent. Oh, okay. Because uh, it's a tough one here. Because I think either way, you either kill the Lothab with kill command, or you don't play kill command this turn. Because next turn you can you know you still have owl kill command. Mm -hmm. Well, this uh, protects and, your Dr. Boom next turn. Actually. Owl kill command hero power. Like if you kill command the Lothab, this uh, means that you want to play uh, Dr. Boom next turn, and it does protect. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Boom a bit. <laughs> KFC is here. And now suddenly the uh, patient assassin doesn't look so scary anymore. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> no, just because on the board at this moment in time. Oh, okay. Because there's just like a 1-2 and a 1-1. One, one. Are you scared of the chicken? Uh, always. Hey, how master? Yeah, I know, right? But then like, how do you damage it? Arcane shot. <laughs> a lot, uh, only Lothar plays Arcane shot in his country. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> only me, man. Feels bad. <laughs> so, do you go for shape shift chicken and a four six stunt? You want to shape shift into a chicken? If, that, if that's what you have to do to win, <laughs> I'll take it. So, um, yeah, I think I think you need to just do that and then play the druid of the claw. That's right. I don't. I don't think there's. I mean, oh, no. as. A safer play. You've just seen a kill command, so actually playing like a uh, force of nature to clear the board isn't going to be enough. Wow. That's a oh cool my god, play. now chicken can connect with face. Okay, so. Oh, 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 is that enough? And that was, why, that was why you should have played the kill command face, listen, if you ever wanted to do that. Well, you're still uh, pretty close to just But you're dead series. next turn. Uh, combo? Yeah, seven mana combo. Seven mana combo with would two be creatures on board. 6, 20, 24 so, damage. Uh, I think uh, it's really tough. We can see this. So, like, Unleash Kill Command is fine. If he, like, I think you have to count combo, right? Well, he didn't. And uh, he it's really weird. It's now it's inconsistent. Because he w killed a 5 5 that wasn't yeah, threatening yeah, yeah. with a kill command, where the Emperor is kind of threatening. Yeah, exactly. For mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Woody he finds it. He should have played that one. No, the hunter. hunter is dead, and Moody is able to defeat it with the Druid, even though it looked really bad. And it seems Teraki style has it. Kill Command the Lothar, as Lothar mentioned, mm. was not the way. But how can you know that there is Thorison into combo? And no, how do no, you know no, they would stop it? How do you know if there's Emperor, Emperor into combo? Is how do you plan to win the game? And the plan was if I want to kill Command a Lothar, so I don't plan to kill him next two turns, right? So if you top deck another kill command, then your plan is, yeah, now I need to play defensively and just bank yeah, on my hero power. Yeah, continue with the style well, of his, just his plan originally was to play Dr. Boom on the board uncontested. Th that made no sense. Because you play a seven-man seven minion that makes two bombs and it dies to the 1-1. One, one. 
So you so basically pay seven mana to create two minions that are 1-1 one, one and are dealing random damage that can be dealt to force of nature, an example that will clear, uh, help clearing out the minions, right? It makes no sense to spend seven mana on that turn. And one yeah. of the worry things as well is the, the bombs, although extra damage and cut hit face, fantastic. If they did clear up minions, it makes the unleash in hand worse. Yeah. So for the follow-up turn, um, yeah, I, I agree. I think with the patient assassin down... Yeah, but he wa just wanted to do it. <laughs> I, I'm not saying it it's like correct. Time, it I just, just wanted to do it. I was saying like, well, you are basically saying that, that on turn seven, he just wanted to play Dr. Boom because everybody says it's always correct. I mean, let's Sorry, let's look at the replay. Ah, yeah. oh, goddammit. It yeah. was... That and the last replay, we saw the turn when he kill commanded the low tip. Yeah. The correct play that turn was to play Unleash the Hounds and Angry Chicken, because you know that there was no swipe in your, in your opponent's hand. You go face, you have two kill commands in the hand. Yeah, and you just win. And you just win. But maybe he really likes Dr. Boom on 7, or he doesn't <laughs> know what Patient Assassin does. I th yeah, I, just, I think like the Dr. Boom on 7... If Patient Assassin was like any other minion, like a Captain's Parrot, right? Mm -hmm. Then like I can understand it a bit more because maybe just like yeah, he doesn't have combo, even though it's exactly the. Then like he would it. just clear it with the uh, with the Hunted Cooper, so it wouldn't be a problem because you don't die to a combo. Yeah. The only problem was that the minion had stealth. Yeah, I just mean like because you knew the boom was going to die. Mm -hmm. Then like you said, it was the seven mana into boom and the two one ones, and then the one ones don't do too much. So, so it's like that was the patient assassin was just the, the key issue mm -hmm. there with boom. Yeah, yeah, like there is no sense in playing boom overall, right? But like he really wanted to play boom, and he <laughs> and he did. Like he just he just slammed it on the board. Yeah, well, that cost that did cost him the game, and now he has to switch, and I guess he will be playing shaman. This is probably nerves. Like, players are just not thinking about it. Like, uh, we s we had that situation where Powder just attacked with Knife Juggler into a uh, Noble Sacrifice. And then he said, like, I just didn't see the secret. It, it wasn't nerves. He was just still asleep. <laughs> it was early in the morning. And he was like, yeah, that was dumb and mistake. I don't know why did I do that. Because I was just still, you know, didn't wake up. Probably. Okay. Does Chucky style look sleepy too? I don't think so. Then this is nerves for him, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably too. He's gonna I mean, probably yes. He's going to go with the Paladin, though, versus the Druid. And to be honest, Paladin... Pretty good versus Druid as well. We saw uh, last set what what this deck can do to a Druid if it you know it draws well. And again, we see the Keeper of Alderman. Not like the quickest start. You know, we might have to see abusive on one with this because you just can't pass. But the um, the Keeper of Alderman is pretty key, and then obviously the Muster decent without a swipe. But pretty sure Mood is going to keep hold of the swipe in this matchup because he knows it's aggro Paladin. Absolutely. Um, well, you should keep the swipe at least. Uh, Raph, you can keep Raph overall to just counter Knife Juggler. But I would probably mulligan Raf away as well. Is there's like two schools, uh, Wide Grove and Innervate are still the best, and you really want to fish for them. Yeah, it's a tough one, like because I would even like I was looking at keeping the three as highlighted now, because you don't have a minion and what earlier stuff are you going to draw? And if you don't draw the Wild Growth, then at least you have a four drop. You have two four drops, which isn't too bad. So I don't mind this, but I do like the Wrath because if like Juggler turn two is. You know, you're not going to not play that as aggro paladin, right? Yeah. You're, you're going to play it, and uh, I think it's just good to have it down. But going into a left oh, dome man. was pretty big. I was like, I just wanted to say that keep keeping those cards as he did, it makes sense overall. So I don't mind this fully as well. But I will probably mulligan those cards away, like just keep swipe because I'm living. Uh, I'm looking for living roots. I'm looking for wild growth, innervate, mm -hmm. and um, keepers. And keepers, yeah. But uh, he did a very safe mulligan, and I think he's in a way getting rewarded uh, because of the living roots. Well, usually you're looking for innovates anyway, but they have additional value uh, because you're playing against a deck which uses the Vang favor, and you want to empty your hand as soon as possible. And in, I would say, more than half of the situations, your engine of law would be used to heal yourself and not draw cards because you outvalue your opponent anyway. Yeah. And if you can deny the divine favor, you seal the win, most likely. Well, we saw that in the last series with Trek Style where he got, oh, I think, turn three big divine favor off against Druid and he just stomped. Because yeah. he just had so many yeah. options. He said all the answers he needed. This is a really nice put your hair card to draw as you said Nimsh, like the living roots pretty huge and this is okay because he can fill out his curve and I actually just expect this and uh, this in the Argent, uh, Argent uh, the abusive squire, uh, the abusive abusive squire off. <laughs> Raven where are you? <laughs> just take a couple of breaths Raven right, you can okay. do it. The abusive sergeant on the Ar uh, not the Argent squire on the Lepinome and just push damage. I don't know why you'd save it. Yeah, yeah you do, you're the one to go for it. I got there in the end guys I'm sorry. Especially be especially because uh, he has the curve in a way with Master Yeah Follow. exactly. 
So, yeah, it's a, it's a good opening overall for the Paladin, just uh, putting the damage in again, just being aggressive. Can Moody stop it? Like, he can easily trade with the two ones. I think you can just wild growth and then you're a little bit worried about Blessing of Kings, but not for another turn yet. So I think you can just uh, wild growth and trade the two 1 1s into the Lepinome and the Abusive Sergeant here. And just Definitely. Leave the one -one. I think the wild growth was all overall a huge draw here. Uh, it will give him much more flexibility with the future card plays. And also ramp straight into swipe for that muster of battle. Yep. That's uh, pretty huge. And then yeah. he can follow up with whatever he wants, and uh, he will be in a good shape but just obviously taking his time. And also we can see as well, like, Trackstyle doesn't really have an option to play around Swipe, if that's the, the you know, the one he goes for mm -hmm. with the Wild mm -hmm. Growth, because, yeah, I'm like, okay, I'm going to play around Swipe and not play my only three drop and hero power instead. Time waits for no one. Yep. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> I don't have anything to add, like, Make trade the one play. ones and play the Wild Growth. Moody, getting swift enough to take his time, though. Takes pretty much the full turn to decide that, or at least to decide to uh, lock that in. Um, so this is going to be a really important draw, and the Owl is pretty dead at the moment. Great card to have versus Druid in this matchup, but uh, he is going to play Muster and probably going to get hurt pretty hard by the swipe. Yeah, it makes sense. I wonder how much uh, Tracky Style is under the influence uh, of the previous loss overall. Do you think it's too risky to play Shredder? I sure into this? I think you do swipe it. Yeah, I think... Why would you not swipe it? It's like be card be for card. Because, because it's f the minions are still going to be there next turn. All they trade into the shredder, and even with and blessing, they will not. Yeah, and they won't. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like at yeah. worst, so you can swipe next turn, and even if he has blessing of kings, mm -hmm. well, you know what, the squire is going to survive, so you can still blessing of kings it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I don't know. I would prob probably swipe here right now, just to limit the number of damage. Like At the moment you're at 22, the minions, uh, there's like 5 power on board, so you go down to 17 if you just Shredder. And like even le even more if there's uh, the Ulduman just uh, because drop. The, the only thing here is like, if you shred it, you can answer the 4 drop of the Paladins next turn. And still swipe. Yep. So I, I, I don't know, Like I, I think the Shred, this is like one of the few occasions you can afford to be greedy with the Swipe versus Aggro Paladin. Because then, if he plays a Shredder, then you're behind again, and then you have to, like, Wrath, and then you're slightly off curve, and, you know, like, it doesn't quite work out. I like this. Well, Tracky Style quickly goes for, I guess, fa damage to face. Not really, not yet. He's mm. considering killing the Shredder. Well, if he was considering killing the Shredder, then he should have not slammed the card first. Because the you should have just divine shielded the squire if you want to trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. you keep holding the minion, right? Yeah. If he goes for face, it's uh, fine to uh, do it on the dude. You can, and there will be too much value um, of just silencing the Argent Squire. Ooh, that's a perfect card. Moody seems to have all the cards he needs to win this matchup. Those are like the, the are almost the perfect combination. I think you just use coin here to clear, right? Does that work? Oh, you leave the 1-1 one -one now. It, well, leaving 1-1-1 one, one, one is not a big problem, right? Yeah. Oh, hang on. No, you don't. You can clear because you can attack with the Shredder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I'm you can even... Like, yeah, you, you can also like just use the coin and innervate and clear this board if you really want to. And then attack face with Shredder and st start racing. Well, yeah, well you, only, you only need the coin, right? Y y y well, you need the coin. You need you, the coin, yeah. You wrath. Yep. Wrath, uh, and swipe. shape shift, and swipe. Oh, and just attack face with Shredder, right? Okay, so... Yeah. yeah, I think this is fine. Yeah. Because then, it, yeah, and I still think you might innovate the, the Ancient of Law next turn. Yeah, you just want to yeah. use the cards and that's it. Whoops. No charges for now, but uh, he can get the charger later. What problems? Ooh. Just silencing Shredder makes sense. I don't think silencing right now is a good idea. Uh, you don't want uh, Shredder to leave your minion behind. Oh. oh! What if a taunt comes down now, though? What if a Druid of the Claw comes down? You have down? plus three attack at least. Well, it can happen, obviously. Ooh. No, no, you still innervate. 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 Uh, oh, wait. No, no, no. There's no, no, no. no, no. Then you force of nature. Yeah. If there's no dragon on board, you just yeah. Yeah. force of nature. Yeah, I think force of nature is pretty safe. And then you lore. Because you still have 15, heal? right? You still, yeah, yeah, I think lore heal could be okay. But maybe you don't, because you can lore innervate hero power. If Imagine. You to draw. Like, no, I think you should heal with the engine of law just to play around Divine Favor. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Divine Favor, like, swiftly becoming the, the out, right? Yeah, yeah. You're, 
your opponent is banking on a top deck each single turn and he plays low value cards the biggest value card he has is a keeper of ultiman yeah and that's about it so if you have a five five minion board it trades two for one it gets you five five health and you play around his only out which is the it trades three. two for one in theory because you can get Argent Horse Rider next turn and that will be 5 damage to face and then deal with it. I don't think it's as well you we follow that up where if you want to play the top deck war, the Druid's definitely going to win that one. Most uh, likely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright, that's uh, a good minion with Vine Shield. Mm, okay. What? I was I was weighing up whether you get the Blessed and Might on, but with the Divine Shield it probably doesn't matter. Nah, no, no, yeah. It's better next turn right now. Because uh, your opponent will know then. He's relying on top deck. Yeah, it's I don't know. And he, here's like asking the question: hmm, Maybe that's an Alkan Golem. Maybe that's an Leroy, right? Maybe it's Divine Favor. Yeah. Because he didn't have the mana to use it, right? Oh wait, he would have used it. Never mind. That's not Divine Favor. Yeah, Divine Favor would definitely be played. So he knows that. Uh, yeah. But no, uh, but he can top deck one, and you have to keep it in mind. If if you draw with Ancient of Lore, you are in bad position overall. Kind of interesting whether he chooses to innovate the hero power here. He's oh, drawing, drawing. So not playing around oh Divine Favor. God, he will he will try to raise this. That that's like the, that's like, <laughs> I, I don't even can wrap my head around it. It's it's just begging to be punished, by the top deck <laughs> Divine Favor. Are you hoping for so can Divine Favor now? I like one. Players are being punished for making So, Lothar, can you explain okay. why he did the draw instead of healing? I have no explanation. I have no explanation because with the Innervate, you plan to use the Innervate this turn, right? And you have no chance of top decking uh, anything more useful yeah, impactful, than, yeah. than the hero power. Because even if you. Okay, you have one thing, and that thing was uh, Living Roots. Yeah. To make two 1 1s. That's the only thing that can. So, do you think he drew cards because of Living Roots? Try uh, to get into Moody's head and explain what was going on right there. It could have been oh, the fact yeah. that, that just drawing cards feel, feels like the right move nine it's times like out of ten in Druid. When you play Druid, you almost always draw the cards, so yeah. it might be like a... Just an autopilot Yeah, sort of autopilot thing. thing. But now you're stuck with those minions. Look at that. You play Azure Drake. The Drakes play don't play around Divine Favor. Yeah, and, and <laughs> you're not and you're playing directly into Divine Favor. And there are two of those in the in the Paladins deck. And if he gets oh. one, if he gets the Divine Favor in the next turn or the next two turns when you don't have you don't have uh, innervates anymore, you will get punished and most likely you will get dead if you don't get the second force of danger also. Yeah, you're dead to Leroy. What was uh, uh, what's the weapon by the way? That's the cock hammer. Right? Yeah. So yeah, there's eight damage. Seven, eight damage. Four and more damage. And the cock hammer. The of kings. The cock hammer is huge here because like the hero power can't keep killing the one one. So now yeah. he's now no, he's always stacking. a one one ahead, yeah. right? And yeah. um, even if he clears off this mini bar. All right. So blessing of kings is lethal. Um, Lear is lethal. Oh! oh look at that! <laughs> Divine favor. Pretty good. Oh my god. Can he still pick Keep up lethal here? Is that, is that five, six, seven, eight, oh, is well, that yeah. Yeah. he's drawing enough. really bad cards. But, yeah, but, but is the low dip is pretty yeah. damn awesome. Oh my god. Really Lothar, well played by you Trevisor. got your wish. This is, this is like the, the basic of knowing how the matchup are going. And this... People are undermining a lot of pro players for like not advancing in in the preliminaries and stuff but then you can see the difference between a preparate uh, a player that is that is preparing for certain matchups that knows his knows his stuff knows his deck and knows the outs of of the matchup and it's a huge difference between a, a player that dedicates a lot of time into the game and and learns from it and there's a player that just plays you know fast and doesn't think about how to win the match. I, I, I will actually turn it around. I think um, I do agree with you, but looking from the other perspective, there is a huge advantage from Traki style, bringing decks that other players are not accustomed with. Because Moody uh, was playing with standard lineups and he, he, he reached final, he played really well, but facing those decks that uh, he hasn't tested before, uh, Zoo versus Hunter, he hasn't uh, played many Hunter matches before, um, Agro Paladin is not that popular as well, yeah. He's not I sure what I to I do. I, th I think the um like uh, and, and again like I'm gonna go the all the way around here. So I'm <laughs> gonna agree with you, Nims, completely. It's hard to play around the deck you've not played against much. But then back to Lothar's point, why haven't you? Why don't you? Why aren't you aware of this deck? It's win condition and the cards that are in it. There are like two cards that are 
basically making this the thing is, divine like, favor and a lot of one ones. Agro Paladin isn't super common, but multiple people I like I know have, have took it really high. Legend, it's a deck that's been on some you know websites for guides and um, things like that. Mid range hunter um, or like slightly aggressive mid range hunter has been pretty much the same deck for so long that you should just know how to play Absolutely. it Absolutely, anyway. but it's like when you're coming to the tournament, uh, from Chucky's style perspective, Chucky's style brought those those decks that are not common, and that's why he's winning right now. He's doing really good. He won versus Arne, exactly because he had those uh, specific cheesy cards like Kazan Mystic and yeah. Flair. He was able to win versus Janet Druid, who wasn't also sure exactly how to play versus his decks. And we can see now he's on a great way to take the, the, the title yeah. with those I, specific decks. I think there's definitely a difference between between knowing matchups and then your lineup just not going well. Because the thing with track style and his tactics of, the, of this tournament for the, for the last day, he's took a hyper aggressive lineup of decks you don't see too often. Um, and that can match up against people prepa not prepared yeah. for these type of decks, which is completely fine. You know, sometimes you, you can have a really rough go of it when your lineup just sucks against your mm -hmm. opponent's lineup. Mm -hmm. That happens, yeah. right? And that's just the way the game is. Absolutely. But, but to like. To not play around certain outs that you know are in this deck it is, it feels really bad. To you know, like he he will probably be upset with with, with that play. I oh, think. definitely. But at the moment, he's uh, like he coming into this final. Moody was definitely stressed, and uh, he knew that his lineup is bad. So he's probably in the mindset, "I can't really win this. Mm -hmm. I, I have to play those matches, but I can't win this unless something a miracle happens." So he's not even thinking about the outs. Yeah, and I think that, I mean this is the turn right with the yeah. card draw, and I think. To be fair to Moody, you card draw so often in Druid and that you feel that, well, I'm going to draw into really good cards that will pull me back in this game. But I think he just blanked on what he was actually, like the knock-on effect Trying to, to achieve, his yeah. opponent's turn. Yeah, definitely. Because if definitely. his opponent has this one card, he is way back. He's already ahead, but then he is like way ahead. And there's cards like Leroy, another Blessing of Might, Blessing of Kings that can cause some real trouble. Unless he's only playing to confuse Lothar and troll him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, imagine I mean, that. He my had, whole tactic for this tournament. He had perfect tools against this particular deck because usually you're just like so smashed by the aggro druid. Yeah. Uh, sorry, by the aggro paladin when you're playing druid. But if you draw, innervate, swipe, engine of law, and you can just you know heal you heal, you, heal yourself back up because that five points of health are so crucial in this matchup. You can just out race the paladin at some point in the of the game yeah and that's and you denied the very favor as well yeah. by not drawing yeah. cards and that's what i think was a shame about that match is like moody actually drew well put himself in a good position overall mm -hmm. and then just sort of failed at last hurdle yeah because he could have easily whiffed that game and it was just steamroll and yeah. that's it because that's and the way the match is a lot said, of the time i didn't do anything because my yeah exactly my because i didn't have an answer and yeah. that that is true in i would say Seven on uh, in ten games with that droid versus the aggro paladin. Maybe six. Yeah, sometimes on, on you, just you just can't do it, yeah? you just you just win. You can do it, but if you have those tools and you have the perfect answer, and it's just about playing the ancient of law correctly, just to make one decision different, and it changes from loss to win most likely. Yeah. Definitely. And now he's down to his last deck, which is a Paladin deck that was a secret Paladin, if I remember correctly. I believe so. Yeah. Versus the aggro paladin. So how does that matchup look like, guys? Well, it's not that bad for the Secret Paladin, I would say. It all depends what, uh, if you get the... I believe he's playing two Cockhammers, right? Moody. I think so, yeah. I yeah, don't, so yeah, I don't yeah, I think so. Right. Yeah. So getting the Cockhammers value uh, with with Taunters that have Divine Shield would be very valuable. And so that's the MVP card that we will be looking for. Noble Sacrifice is, yep. again, another awesome card that is only bad against the Argent Squires. Otherwise, it's pretty damn great. So... Yeah, there's a lot of options. That's the Coke Hammer. Well, Secret they, Keeper is well an awesome they, card too. They, they both have like pretty decent openings actually. Well, Secret Keeper seems awesome, but on the other hand, there are no secrets in the other deck. Um, so it, it's going to be just well, a the one. The thing is, it's not about the Se yeah, Secret Keeper is good for the body. Um, so I like Track Style's um, Mulligan and keeping the Owl. Because Owl locks down Juggler, locks down Minibot to a certain... It sort of one-for-ones with a Minibot. Um, so he kept that and the Lepinome, and, and then look at this opening hand. Like, this is pretty crazy. Would you keep the Shredder uh, um, on Moody's side? I don't think so. I, don't, I think you need a two-drop. You At least with this deck, you need to go one-for-one one every turn. You have um, a dude, in theory. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, and it, it will trade with most, but like if, it got, if you got a Minibot, then that's huge because it trades so well. Um, I, I would lean towards throwing the Shredder. Although you are only missing a two drop, yeah. I so I would just mulligan away the shredder because you know it's all about 
early game. Early, early game, yeah. And the thing is, as you can see from uh, you know, like the secret paladin in other aggro matchups, they can't really heal. So if the yeah. if the paladin's fast enough and then just draws into Leroy, what, how are you going to play around it? But he got a really awesome, awesome start. Yeah. If he loses this game, that means that he will be whiffing in the upcoming f five turns yeah. from the top of the deck because the start is insanely good. Yeah, yeah exactly what you want to trade versus those minions on the opposing side. And uh, the weapon will buy you so much time. Yeah. It's like think. 5 HP at, like, just immediately by having the taunt and the divine shield. The thing is there, like, depending on how this looks, um, there is a chance that Trackstar might end up owling that. But even so, that's not like the, the best owl you want in this matchup. You want the owl, owl either later on oh, to stop, say, if the sludge boucher comes down. Um, or, you know, there's every chance that he might go owl on the secret keeper or the, or the creeper as well. Oh, just to slow down and really battle for the board. Definitely. Well, here you open with the secret keeper, so it makes a lot of sense. And then, uh, what do you guys think overall about the aggressive pilot in hand? It looks, uh, it looks definitely alright. It looks okay. I would say it's look, it's looking really good too. But yeah. oh second cucumber, <laughs> it can change things again. Wow! You just play the hunted creeper, kill, uh, kill the divine shield, and that's about it. What's um, so so okay? What's your opinion on the second cucumber? Good or bad? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. You, okay. Cool. It's I was great. just checking because I was like, a lot of the time you what? see two card coming, like, oh, this is bad. In this match, no. Great. no, you don't awesome. care about the weapon that much. You want the effect. <laughs> you get Argent Squires with taunts. Yeah. When you have that kind of board, it's more than awesome. And, and, get, and the minions that are taunted, they're probably going to kill the minions that are attacking exactly. them. Exactly. <laughs> like, and you have the weapon itself also to like yeah. protect your board and uh, get some damage in. If you are protecting yourself mm. with those taunts with divine shields, you are not taking that much damage from the minions, so you're fine just killing knife jugglers and even. Uh, dudes with this weapon to protect yeah. your board and just uh, keep racing and advancing. Yeah. It's very important to also empty his hand as soon as possible. Yeah. So using weapons, quickly. playing small minions. The downside awesome. of, of secret paladins is actually going to come in as a good side on this yeah. one of not having card draw. <laughs> not exactly agreeing with sacrificing the secret keeper here, because yeah, <laughs> look at that. Uh, because it can it can actually mean a lot in the future turns. Uh, to still have that secret keeper up when it can be buffed, right? And your opponent will be like, mm, maybe I should kill him. Yeah, it's a tough one. So you would have just gone face? Well, if you no, no, I would just destroy the divine shield. Yeah, but then the one one just kills the secret keeper yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's so perfectly fine. But then the leprechaun's pushing for more damage. Like. But, it, but then you can play the conch hammer and get the divine shield, kill the leprechaun, mm. and still have the taunt and empty board. Yeah. Most likely, because you will use the conch hammer to. Uh, kill, 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 kill the minion that will be played from your opponent. But what if there's a cock hammer from your opponent on the leprechaun and then no, things just get crazy? You can't really <laughs> predict that. Yeah, like yeah. Well, you can expect it. Just those double cock hammers are looking at you and it's like, hey, I'm a popular guy in this deck mm. and uh, in this match overall. So this turn, I actually like creeper into the 1-1 one -one, and then cock hammer and then cock hammer onto the 2-1. Uh, onto the two one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think that's this the is really play. nice. <laughs> That's basically the only play yeah. to do here. I was just looking. I, I thought I'd say it, Nymphs. I'd yeah, throw it yeah. out there. It's good. Point it out. <laughs> like, attacking into a 1 1. Okay, yeah, th this, saves, this saves some damage. That's fine. That wasn't the only play. There no, was a different was, one. There was two plays. You could also go face. Now, that, this makes sense. Uh, you're taking uh, less damage, and uh, the 1 1 should be able hmm. to, to kill the 2 1. But uh, there is a knife juggler. Does it change anything? No, but you can cog hammer. You can and the 2 1 survives as a taunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tough though, mm. because if you hit the juggle, you're feeling good. <laughs> Do you? Oh, no, this is better because cog hammer's down. Yeah, right? this, so is the juggle this is definitely yeah, yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, I I'm so used to just seeing the muster for battle, the light's just this weapon. Yeah, also, like, there was only one juggle, so your iron big owl would die. Yeah. So this is definitely fine. And that here. Was the turn to drop the pile to shredder. Yep. Kill off the 2 1, drop the shredder. Yeah. I'm probably feeling pretty good about it actually for Moody. He's not under uh, any serious amount of pressure, and this board could look very, very different mm. if he didn't have those early minions to yeah. challenge. And the late game is actually uh, favoring Moody overall as a secret yeah. paladin because the. As long the as he keeps his hand down. Uh, yeah. To not go yeah. into divine favor. But you will you will eventually draw into um, Belcher, Lotha, Mistress Challenger. Yeah. And uh, you can always throw those cards away. Like Shredder now, because that's great. Mm. Next turn you can play maybe a second Kong Hammer and uh, Iron Big Owl if you have a good target. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely fine for Moody. 
what Chucky Star has to find to get a better end of this game. He can potentially get two juggles to try and hit the shredder. I yeah. don't think you just hit the shredder and just go face every single time. You just you, you at the point where your opponent has already the tempo advantage. So attacking the shredder if that if that minion wouldn't have the fertile effect, sure. Mm. Fine. Yeah, but Completely the, the minion fine. afterwards gonna cause issues but anyway. Yeah, it, it makes no sense to give your opponent more tempo tempo plays next turn, right? So you just Keeper, damage Keeper makes sense though. Uh, I agree with attacking to face to just uh, add the pressure. Uh, Keeper not really contested by the shredder at the very moment. I'm not exactly sure about the Keeper. That's some. That's like a really tough, tough, tough question to to answer right away. If it's okay to play the Keeper of uh, Wildo Man. It's like free damage minion. right now. Because not exactly. It's not about this. It's about what if I just want to use it on my own minion mm, because it, it gets. It's like the additional threat in your board, right? Yeah. And it gets like the situation in, on the board is getting out of control, and you probably will value your own buff. And I mean the buff on your own minion, then on the opponent's debuff Let with like think. minus one attack. Yeah, as, I suppose what can be a bit difficult is because he doesn't already have the board, he wouldn't get like the charge effect of the damage. Uh, so you just build a bigger minion and, and hope it doesn't get cleared, right? Yeah, but you build up the board with, um, with the minions you already have in hand. It's not that cool. Yeah. yeah, but it's still a really good situation for me. Like he got full value out of the first cook hammer, and I was getting double cook hammer. Double this cook hammer, yeah. And the silence was already used. Hmm. Second part of the shredder. Uh, I mean, sorry, first part of the shredder for Trekistar. I'm, I wasn't aware he's playing part of the shredder in his deck. Yeah, it's um. Raven mentioned it before. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 the shredders, although it's not like hyper face, it's a minion that sticks. So then your buffs become more reliable mm -hmm. uh, for like the blast of might, blast of king, so on. Um, so I, sh sh two shreds are fine, but they're like pretty much those and the uh, Keeper of Aldermans are like the only sort of straight up minions you just play. Everything else is normally super aggressive. So do you just uh, Blessing of Kings the 2-2, two -two, silence the shredder, attack into the shredder uh, with uh, the 6-6 six -six minion, kill it easily, kill the Leopard now with the shredder attack and then go to to face with the weapon, I guess? Because you're not taking any damage for this and your shredder is contested by the weapon. But it's still free damage. You get a minion, and then Let you still has, have a six, on, a six six on the board. Hmm. I li I kind of like it. Like you can obviously try killing Leprechaun with the weapon, but I would be afraid of taking four more damage. I, I think, think that's fine. You take two anyway. I think this is the turn when you actually start the magic phase. Six damage to the face. Sorry, eleven damage. To to the face this game, and you know that the opponent uses silence already. Yeah. Sounds like a good deal. And you're the aggressor now. You you don't care about. And the still a, the, he still has to hit through Shredder and yeah. the six six. Yeah. So and then Shredder's gonna drop a minion. So this yeah. was the turn to switch the gear, the the gear. But he would actually get more damage if he would go uh, with a divine shield to the face, and there will be still a pilot Shredder on the board, which is a four attack minion. You just get another four to the face, like actually six with this even. Uh, so. Like, if Moody would be able to take control of this game and just stop the damage coming, and without cards in hand... Ooh, that was Oh, huge. wow, that was a good snipe. Oh, oh. that's also just huge. Just in time. And he can play the comp spirit. Yep. Pretty sick. Oh, yeah, that's good. So... Race. Eh. I, you can kill the juggler, though. I don't know whether you use the, the minion to kill the juggler, though. Well, six damage to face, so you set up lethal for next turn, do you? Set up lethal? That will be... It would be 14, 16. Six damage would take you to 16 uh, if he doesn't clear, so... Maybe more, actually, because you get a noble sacrifice as well yeah, if he exactly. doesn't kill it afterwards. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I guess you do. I guess you do. Six to face and kill Juggler with the weapon, right? The answer would have been really easy if he would just attack face last turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very easy. Yeah, but, like, you cannot know that exactly. That you will actually get Mystery Challenger off the top, and uh, you do not. It, it's really hard to assume what can happen uh, from opposing side. Is there a Leroy? If it connects, what can happen there? Well, now it's lost. Like, there's no way Tracky Star can make a comeback from this position. Because it's. Um, is he just dead next turn? There is uh, 9, 15, is plus two, 17, 19. Yeah. Uh, plus uh, three, twenty-two. I think it takes like lethal, actually. He's on twenty anyway. Oh no! Okay, so. okay. 
Well, so one off. Yeah. Yeah, that's one off. Unless. Well, we don't see the draw. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Nope. Well, if it's one off, oh my can Shaki oh still actually return with like, this? What are the odds on Moody trading <laughs> on this box? If there is a Leroy top deck, what happens? Uh, so Shaki well, has he what? can trade what, six, an attack with the weapon. Seven. He's one off with Leroy. Yeah. So, so you, just, you just go face, right? Uh, you play Shredder, three, so you can't six, divine favor. Seven, and you're one off with Leroy. Seven, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just go face. You can't yeah. lose. You can what? kill one minion. And yeah. go fades with this second one, but uh, but killing one does nothing as well because you take yeah. the one damage next turn so anyway. Smog, please. Face and that's it. Quartermaster. Oh, oh. oh track <laughs> style. Don't help, help your opponent. He could have traded into two one ones and gave you another I mean, turn. This is a valuable information to hold your opponent place. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't concede that. I want to see in that situation what my opponent is thinking. How he's safe like, does he play? If he's like trading both minions, I can take advantage of that. Yeah. I can play the fifth game in a different way that I would do. Chucky style, Chucky style doesn't have time for games. He's Sylvanas? <laughs> yeah, he kind of is. He's taking control over this game. He's not dead yet, though. He's, yeah, he's not dead yet. So, um, yeah, he just concedes because he, he knows he has Shaman versus Paladin. And originally Shaman is uh, very good versus Paladin. Ooh. Oh, were we not doing that? Were you just getting no, the camera I, shot? I was, oh, sorry. I was just getting I thought you were just crop. moving closer to me, Lothar. No, 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 you no, felt no, like no, it was no, an invitation? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Feels bad. But anyway, guys, <laughs> what do you think about that matchup? Like, Chucky Style is playing the, the Shaman with Elemental Destruction. It's, uh, do we know if it's one or two? Uh, we've seen one only, so not sure if he's playing two or one. <laughs> yeah, I think we did only see the one. Yeah, well, but he can have two and, you know. Yeah. Definitely. He can have two in his deck. Well, in this in this match, as Lothar mentioned, Moody had an amazing opening, and he played it, uh, let's say, good enough. Uh, he was able to go through it and uh, win on the back of that Mistress Challenger. But if you would not get Mistress Challenger off the top, I think Tracky Star had a good chance to actually take that game anyway. Well, yeah, and what's crazy yeah. is he even had a you know he had a good opening. He had the the double cog hammer. He had all the good tools early on, and yeah, it was still quite close, it which, was, is, it which was. is scary. Yeah, but it was because. Moody wasn't aggressive enough. Yeah. This is the turn. Look, w without the challenger yet, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, you are already be on eighteen. You are building up the pressure, and your opponent is like, "Well, I'm guess I might be dead next." And, turn. and there was still the uh, shredder taunted to go through. Yeah. So you know that still needed killing, and the weapon wasn't enough on its own. So it had to have been weapon or minion, a new card, or the juggler, or a juggle hit, of course. Mm -hmm. But we were asking Nimsh about the the matchup of the shaman. Yeah. And it's very draw dependent. It all depends if you get the clear. If you start with minions, do you have the burn in hand? Because sometimes you might just be playing a waiting game and just wait till the opponent's paladin will just build up the board and then drop the bomb, which is the elemental storm. You finish it up with level shock. And you're like, yeah, okay, now it's my turn. Now I will play minions. I'll just burst you down with 25 damage from the f from the hand. Okay, if it's draw dependent, then Lothar predictions. Uh, oh. Shaman or Paladin? I would say Shaman, because uh. Shaman has more tools. Okay. But if 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 the Paladin can curve out and get the core hammers, then it might go the Paladin way. But I, I, I'm saying that Shaman should have better ma uh, matchup in this. Situation. All right, Raven, Tracky yeah. style or? Yeah, I have to go for Tracky style just purely based on class. I think um, Tracky style is like playing slightly better overall this whole set. Um, but I've played a lot of Secret Paladin against a lot of Shaman and. You really need to god draw to, to be able to survive that matchup because sometimes it's just too quick. Like your all your minions are really good, but the shaman stuff is just too fast. And then like, how does Paladin deal with Totem Golem early enough? Like it already it ends up doing like six damage, yep. and then that's already too much. Yep. You have no health. I mean, sorry, no heal in the deck. Exactly. And uh, if that Doom Hammer just pops on the fifth yeah, turn, yeah, there's and nothing like, you oh, can do. Ooh. I will. I will agree with oh. you guys. I think oh. shaman, and oh not even after seeing this, this <laughs> hand, I agree. Shaman Nimp swings in after seeing the hand. Right? Convenient. Come on, <laughs> come on. So it's suffice to say, Tracky Style has good cards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, the Tunnel Trog Coin Feral Spirit is one of the best openings in the game. He might do a, a, a slight misplay, I would say, by playing Tunnel Trog into Sir Finley. Surely not. The, if the guys brought Shaman, like, 
But yeah, but tunnel drop yeah. into it's first not even a, It's not even a misplay. Like if you get a steady shot, you can steady shot turn two and then go first three. It's not about that because it's so about the damage. overload. The buff and overload. Spirit. Okay, you, just you, to buff you them. play tunnel drop on one. First, first two. two, you get two overload and turn three, so you have three to play. And Finley and use on the third. On yeah. or Finley, and yeah. you're like filling out the curve, you're building up the damage. It's like so much. It's pressure. basically the perfect opening, right? And what does what does a paladin do against two? Two threes. I will two tell you in a moment. I will tell you in a moment. He does not play Tyrion. Oh! But uh, Secret Keeper might be a card. Secret Keeper is a good opener. It's oh, Kalkam is okay. If I just still don't know if it's good enough. He needs top deck a second secret. Like Noble yeah. Sacrifice, yeah, possibly? Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, Noble Sacrifice, turn two. If Moody... Like, Moody went... is going far away. Actually, uh, far enough. Like, uh, he was supposed to Let lose zero free. But he <laughs> he was supposed nice, to nice lose. things to say. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like I, he was lineups, really afraid lineups, of those lineups. Yeah, yeah this uh, all about the lineups. But he made it to two two, and he is standing one game away from taking the championships. But so is Chucky style. He is favored in this matchup. He has a better hand. Let's see who will be who will be our Wonder. champion. Oh. Well, you he's he has a decent oh, open secret yeah. keeper, and. One competitive spirit, it's still okay. You have the cold hammer. You have some yeah, means if to he like, utilize the if board. If he then can continue drawing well after this, he definitely has what he needs to, to take this game. But if something like Mysterious Challenger comes out later, I mean, it comes out now and he can't play it till later, that's going to slow him down quite a lot. Oh, actually, that was not that bad. Yeah, Aaron Miguel can stop the trog. That's but really not I that would bad. still prefer a second secret, though. <laughs> yeah, of <Yeah>. course. <laughs> <laughs> The second secret would have been much better. I, I, I'm sure of that. Those troll games where we really do not want to draw secrets, but this mm. one game in the final, uh, a 2,000 difference uh, in dollars if you uh, get the secret. It's actually four. It's actually four. Yeah, you're right. It doubles from 4,000 to 8,000. Wow. So having 4,000 or not having 4,000 is 8,000 yeah. in general. 4, <laughs> That's like 8,000 difference. It's not more than 9,000, but it's still impressive. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So hey, when you I if you go for owl on the trog, um, do you trade in or like you know like attack with the uh, secret keeper uh, on the trog to put it in cog hammer range next turn? I don't think so. I uh, well, you value one Shrug damage to face that much? Um, no, you probably value secret keeper because next turn you maybe actually will get the secret, or, or you will just want for uh, will go for a dude. I wouldn't attack into that because the problem is, uh, as Nimsh said. You don't want to lose the secret keeper. You have actually a valuable minion on board yeah. right now, which can help you getting the board control next in the upcoming turns. Yeah. Wait, what? Wait a minute! I silenced that truck. I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, he that. just uh, had to kill the secret keeper, right? Shape shift. Shape shift. Shape shift again. No. Oh, oh lifetap okay. this time. Well. Well, lifetap is a great uh, hero power as well, just drawing more cards, especially because his hand doesn't look that great yet. I mean, you're damaging yourself, that's not the point. <laughs> well, this is a secret paladin. <laughs> I, I would value just the the attack. The, 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 the thing is, how do you deal with noble sacrifices? With noble sacrifices, you have three minions on board. Yeah, you well, you will not, ha you will not have those very hammer. soon. <laughs> but then you have Doomhammer, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you want to go with the Rogue at some point, so you want to break those noble sacrifices as soon as possible, most likely with the help of your hero as a resource, instead of losing a minion that can possibly, in theory, deal more damage than, mm. than your hero with the druid power anyway, right? And it it's the game will end pretty, pretty damn fast. In this, in this matchup. So well, if the well, uh, this is like still early turns, and uh, if you don't really have much on turn four, have using life tap to get the doom hammer that you mentioned, uh, get the lava burst and other cards. Like you want to deal as much damage early game versus paladin with the minion, but then you need the burst because you know you are losing the board game at some point. Like paladin will overpower you with the. Oh my shield. god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this was a, a pretty good trog. Oh my god! Definitely this is a Pug like champ moment. Oh, and there's still lightning bolt for removal so of anything that's going to come down as well, and to gain more overload onto the truck. Oh my god, there is like oh, there's <laughs> co consecration doesn't even deal with this. Do, he's not playing consecration. Yeah, he's not. But like, even if he would, does he have to like keep her onto the truck? We need new cards for Paladin. I think we need like a justice destruction or something. 
Yeah, hey, hey, there's that. Um, what is it? The uh, the Colosseum. Enter the Colosseum. Yeah. Enter the Colosseum. It's <laughs> for six mana. It's like Look, you it's use like brawl, right? <laughs> but then the trog will live. And so it's like, oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> um, do you like? Okay, you will not be Wild able to play it next turn, but you can elemental distraction for damage actually <laughs> to buff the mm. trog. No, because <laughs> everything will die, Nim. Oh, you crazy. Man. What? Crazy person. Okay, it deals <laughs> damage. <laughs> LA destruction to buff the truck. So oh the man, I forgot dies. it deals damage to your minions as well. <laughs> Haven't played. Okay, that would that be insane. If that card would not damage your minions, I would play no, Shaman no, three no. times <laughs> in, <laughs> in last hero standing. Oh, uh, yeah. This is the actual play because if he does it on any other minion, he gives the uh, Shaman more damage, but he has. Oh! <laughs> He, well, can't, he can't lightning bolt though. But he can life tap now. No, he life tap. Yeah, life tap's fine. Life tap and go face. Oh you don't my care. God. Y you are protected from any attacks. Would shape yeah, shift be better then? Probably. It's one damage. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's one damage. Yeah. That one damage might be more important. Well, I was going to say, this. No. Th no, I don't think this is terrible because the problem is the 3 4 starts kill kills off both of your. Uh, yeah. Or kills off one of your taunts. But, but, but you're, bl you're having blanks. If you play lightning bolt, bolt then you can't play. The Doom Hammer next turn. Yeah, but Doom Hammer. Look, look at no, the damage no. on both, though. That doesn't matter. The Doom Hammer adds two points of attack next turn, right? And four damage each turn. So you need to count the Doom Hammer in the initial f in, in in the initial turn as a six damage card, and then you have three turns of four damage uh, uh, four damage each turn. So that's twelve damage over course and of three rock turns. Well. So yeah. that's twenty damage from a single card that you can't play next turn just because you played a greedy play with a lightning bolt to kill a minion that decreases the attack of your board by two but you increase your board damage by one. Okay, you convinced me, Lothar. Makes no sense. You convinced me. So, um, can you explain why he did that? <laughs> He's playing <laughs> safe for no apparent reason when lightning bolt finishes up the game because your opponent is already at 21 and it's damage to the face. That smoke damage. Really good juggle though there. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he perfectly juggled that. <laughs> Raynan would be so proud. <laughs> if you hit the, the skill, second the skill mode juggle, if you hit the play. second wolf, that would be really bad. <laughs> really. No, it's look, it's the juggle on the truck would have been bad. So yeah. Oh. And now we have to tap, and it's like, yeah, well, I just. I just lava shock the. Oh, lava shock is pretty good. Um. Yeah. Uh, I I think you want to kill the juggler, right? With lava shock. Yeah, just, then just cause. Silence Avenge? If that's Avenge, no. Well, if that's Avenge, then you can just Elf Shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, why, yeah. that's why. Yeah. I mean, probably the game is already lost f for the Paladin. But. There is the Mistress Challenger! Can he still come back? Uh, but with Doom Hammer, it won't with matter. With Hammer or turn 5, the game would be like, yeah, okay, I'm done. Yep. And the thing is, as well, like, drawing this Earth Shock. Just makes Tyrion insignificant yeah. on every <laughs> single. No, it does. <laughs> it's just the most insignificant card ever now because it's just well, does nothing. Just a six-six. It yeah. will most likely would be used on the. No, it makes no sense to use it on. on no, the you don't care about health. Challenger. You yeah, don't yeah, care yeah, about yeah. health. So like, it literally is like he comes in with his legendary music and his shiny, you know, <laughs> portrait. With it's the like trumpets. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like one man is. Can we call him Purion? Yes, mm. insignificant. That's what I will call him. It's terrible. Oh my god, this this doom hammer is pretty crazy. Who am I? But Moody got far, uh, far enough, I guess, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that word, the first word was okay. <laughs> he did his best. Oh, oh my god. Well. And see, see what I'm talking about? <laughs> now right, that Lothar, biter, calm down. That robot ro ro would have been lethal. Yeah, actually, actually Wait, it would have been is just it, isn't it the lethal game. here? Not yet. No, he's, he's too off. Okay. okay. But it was close. Oh, I kind of want him to hold off the turn 8 to Earthshock the Tyrion. Just for the ultimate. <laughs> the like, and then Lol. kill him with the Doom Hammer. <laughs> and then Ellie Destruction. And then kill just him. Just be like Trakista. I just want to relive this moment. This is my yeah. moment. I just want to be in it. So, I, so okay. In all seriousness, I, I want Ellie Destruction this turn from the Shaman if there's no concede. <laughs> I, I do. I just want to see Ellie. Because I want to see the Trog buffed for just that split second. <laughs> and then just blow up. Oh my god, it'd be so good. Ooh. Oh, Sludge Belcher. Oh wait, the well, most insignificant Sludge yeah, Belcher. It's, it's, still, it's still a good spider tank. Yeah. It is a taunt. 
Hey, it's a bit better than Spider Tank. It's got it's three five. Well, Muddy hopes four. he still has a no, chance though. The -shot, That's yeah. why he's Spider Tank. And now you've moved up closer again, Lothar. You're, gi you're giving me mixed signals. Now I I'm making a space for the winner of the final. That's why I'm scooping oh, okay. up and we're touching knees. <laughs> How does it feel? Well, we have genies, so <laughs> it's not okay. you know, it's not like bare knees. Thank you for the description. Yeah, we we, we both have hairy knees too, probably. So you know, it's kind of weird <laughs> when you think about it. Well, Tracky style might be the one with the trophy, though. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know, like where you want to sit. Like you might want to sit near Tracky style. We will need a translator. We have one though. Yes. Yeah. So Moody just takes his chances here and hopes that there is no air shock or nothing else, and he will be able to just uh, finish the game quite quickly. But <laughs> yep, there is an air shock, yeah. and then goes his. Ellie destruction. Uh, Oh, no BM! Oh. Oh. No what a champion! <laughs> no BM! What a good guy! Yeah, well, they, they shake hands. Shake hands. Style is yeah. our champion for PGO Tavern Turn Tales Spring Edition. Gets the trophy. Congratulations to him. He Woo! brought an unstandard lineup. He climbed through the crossfire. Oh, he took it! Oh. <laughs> he just took the He's trophy. not waiting to be given <laughs> yeah. that trophy. It's this his. is his trophy. Yep. It's his trophy. He went through the qualifier, through the Swiss rounds, then uh, just through the top 16. With those awesome. aggressive decks, sit that's down, man. Really impressive, really impressive. So, Nims, you're, you're the host. Start first, <laughs> Chucky style. Congratulations, you're the champion. Thank you very much. How do you feel? Like I just um, well, this is this was an amazing final. It went super fast for you, and uh, that you got really great draws with the shaman deck as well. It had to feel great, right? That's what I'm with shaman ultimate match. Wood, tunnel, drug, coin, feral spirit. Antras, perfect. Um, he feels like he played excellent with the, the Shaman and that his uh, draws were just about perfect. Yeah, I, I heard that was a Trog and a Spirit Wolf in one sentence, and that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> was there any hard moment for you during uh, those matches overall? In the second match, I had some emotions, because I saw a deck that I could play with my own deck. I saw the Paladin is very strong in front of the Shaman and in front of the um, he was especially worried during the second round because he knows that Secret Paladin is a very strong deck uh, against Shaman and Hunter. And uh, we are wondering, uh, why would you really... Like when he was playing, uh, you were playing Hunter versus Druid and there was a patient assassin on board. You, you played Dr. Boom specifically into that patient assassin. Why was that? Yeah, I was Dar să pun presiune pe el cu acel boom, dar din păcate a avut el letală cu The Force of, Force of Nature și s-a va jucat. Da, deci atunci am greșit foarte mult de oricea să dau cu o tură înainte uh, Kirkoman pe Luateb și avea letală o tură viitoare, dar am să pun presiune pe el cu boom și am pierdut la combo. So he feels that maybe that was a little misplay because he, know, he knows that he should have played uh, Luateb. Uh, Yeah, the kill command. Yeah, he's saying that he should kill command phase instead of loaded. Yeah, yeah, because there was a kill command coming. Yeah, definitely. But I just wanted to add that he does feel like it was a bit of a misplay, but he wanted to add pressure by using Doctor Boom. Okay, it makes sense. So, guys, any more questions about the matches for Chucky Style? For me, it was just an exciting tournament to cast, and the final were feeling like a final, a final actually, because we sometimes miss that excitement yeah. uh, during the matches. So, congrats to, to you again, and you're the first uh, spring champion. I yeah, to say first tavern tales, but, but this is the first spring tavern tales. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So exactly in the offices of PGL. So, the first champion for the PGL offices for sure. And uh, is there anyone you would like to thank? Am avut foarte mari emoții la acest turneu, a fost primul pentru mine și a fost primul când am fost filmat și emoțiile sunt mari. Um, ok, he says that this was his first big tournament and he was really, really nervous. Uh, but uh, cui ai vrea să-i mulțumești? Ai vrea să-i mulțumesc prietenilor mei, colegilor din echipă, deoarece m-au ajutat să fac decurile și cam atât. He wants to thank his friends for all their support and his teammates for uh, their help in uh, preparing his decks. All right, okay. perfect. Raven, any questions? Uh, no, just just one really. Um, how important did you think your like different lineup was in terms of progressing this far and taking the whole tournament? Because you you brought very different decks to everyone else. I think I was thinking about the fact that 
cu două meciuri înainte, luând, fri, luând Hunter în loc de Renoloc, deoarece am aflat că oponentul meu joacă Frisbee. So I think uh, he thinks that his most important change was uh, the fact that he brought a hunter because uh, of the freeze mage, uh, which belonged to Anish, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that uh, that was really impressive to see a different lineup that uh, really plowed for players, and uh, you were able to take like most of the top 16. You actually took free zero, free zero. Then versus Gianni, uh, the score was uh, was it free two or was it free one? It was free two. Oh, free one? Okay, free one. Fr free one. Free one and yeah. then free two in the final. So it got harder um, towards the final, but you were able to take it in the end. And uh, the Shaman versus Paladin looked re really convincing on your side as well. So congratulations, you're our champion. Uh, what does it mean for you to win here uh, in Romania as a Romanian yourself? Da, in Romania, I don't know if I've ever known Moody. The players from XPC, from Nexus, I don't know if I've ever played a lot of tournaments. And maybe through this I've been known. So he knows that he came into this tournament as a well-known, uh, as an unknown, pretty much. Uh, and he knows that there are other uh, great players and more popular players like Moody and uh, they're the boys from XPC Gaming. Uh, but ultimately he thinks that this tournament will help him uh, grow his name and uh, also his uh, popularity uh, on the local scene. And why not? This is my own personal addition on the international scene as well. Yeah, so the final question would be, uh, do you plan to continue playing as a, pro as a professional player? Will you go to DreamHacks as well? Yeah, probably I'll go to DreamHacks, because now maybe I'll have some experience, and why not I'll make a surprise So he thinks that uh, he's gained enough experience and he's looking forward to competing in DreamHack, and why not maybe cause a couple of surprises there also? Perfect, we're looking Sounds forward good, to yeah. casting more of your matches. Yep. yep. All right, so... Yep. <laughs> from from <laughs> our side, from our side, that will be it, um, guys. That was the final. We have our finalist, Traki Styles, the champion. This was a, a really long tournament, but we had a lot of fun, a lot of exciting matches, exciting decks, and uh, with all those pro players here and PGL team, we had a lot of fun. So hopefully, you guys had fun as well in front of the TVs, um, guys. Lothar. Yeah, yeah. Just continue, please. Your your turn. I just wanted to to ask you, what are your feelings after the tournament? Any final words? I'm always super happy to cast PGL events. They're always fun, always bringing uh, something new to the table because every single event that I was in Bucharest was an improvement to the previous one and they're kind of like a pioneer uh, in the tournament scene. So it's just awesome to be here again. Raven? Yeah, and uh, sort of echoing what you've said, but this is my first time here, which has been awesome for me. I'm really happy to be invited. And uh, just cool, like it's kind of did everything right in terms of the Swiss, uh, the online qualifications that are open, uh, the Swiss into the stages. All the players loved getting to meet all the players is always fun. And uh, and obviously casting with you guys as well. So always a pleasure. Absolutely. It was great. We had some players casting with us as well, and it was great fun. So in the future, obviously, if there are more pl players interested in casting, would like to have them with us. But, um, well, not. everything good, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> everything good has to end at some point. And uh, after those three games, uh, three, three days of uh, exciting games, we will finish and um, take a break. No more players to prepare, um, no more Hearthstone for you today. If you're interested in more Hearthstone, I would like to invite you to my YouTube channel. Uh, there is a very interesting video about Nut Bagel that I released on Friday, so we can check that out. But uh, other than that, that will be it from us here uh, today, from PGL, from Lothar, Raven, uh, Traki Style, from Diana, and all the pro players gathered, the PGL team. Thank you so much for watching, and see you guys next time. Have a good night.